Rickets is a condition that affects the development and strength of bones in children. It's a disorder that occurs when bones don't mineralize properly during growth, leading to soft and weak bones. During childhood, bones are constantly growing and reshaping. This process requires a delicate balance of minerals, particularly calcium and phosphate, along with vitamin D. Rickets occurs when there's a disruption in this balance, usually due to a severe and prolonged vitamin D deficiency. Without enough vitamin D, the body can't properly absorb and use calcium and phosphate, which are essential for building strong bones. The result is that bones become soft and weak. They can bend and bow under the weight of the body, leading to the characteristic bowed legs often associated with rickets. But the effects aren't limited to the legs. Rickets can affect all the bones in the body, potentially causing widespread skeletal deformities and other health problems. In the United States, it's estimated that rickets occurs in about 1 in 200,000 children. However, some experts believe these numbers might be underestimated, as mild cases may go undiagnosed. Certain populations are also at higher risk. Children with darker skin are more susceptible because melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color, reduces the skin's ability to produce vitamin D from sunlight. Exclusively breastfed infants are also at higher risk if their mothers are vitamin D deficient, as breast milk typically doesn't contain enough vitamin D to meet an infant's needs. Causes of rickets. The most common cause is a lack of vitamin D. This can happen for several reasons. One is simply not getting enough vitamin D through diet or sunlight exposure. Our bodies can produce vitamin D when our skin is exposed to sunlight, but in many parts of the world, particularly at higher latitudes, there isn't enough strong sunlight year-round to meet our vitamin D needs. Diet can also play a role. Few foods naturally contain high levels of vitamin D. Fatty fish, egg yolks, and some mushrooms are among the best natural sources. In many countries, foods like milk, orange juice, and cereals are fortified with vitamin D, which has helped reduce the incidence of rickets. However, if a child's diet is very limited, or if they have allergies or intolerances to these foods, they might not get enough vitamin D. In some cases, rickets can be caused by genetic factors. There are inherited forms of rickets where the body can't properly process vitamin D or regulate phosphate levels. These forms are much rarer than vitamin D deficiency rickets, but they can be more challenging to treat. Certain medical conditions can also lead to rickets. Disorders that affect the absorption of vitamins and minerals in the gut, such as celiac disease or inflammatory bowel disease, can interfere with vitamin D and calcium absorption. Kidney problems can also lead to rickets, as the kidneys play a crucial role in activating vitamin D in the body. Symptoms of rickets. The symptoms of rickets usually appear gradually and can vary depending on the severity of the condition and the age of the child. One of the earliest signs parents might notice is delayed growth. A child with rickets might be shorter than their peers and grow more slowly. They might also be late in reaching developmental milestones like sitting up, crawling, or walking. As the condition progresses, skeletal deformities become more noticeable. The classic sign of rickets is bowed legs, where the legs curve outward. In some cases, the knees might actually knock together, a condition known as knock knees. The child's wrists and ankles might become widened and knobby-looking. The skull can also be affected. Babies with rickets might develop a soft spot on the skull that's larger than normal or is slow to close. The forehead might appear prominent, and the sides of the skull might be flattened, giving the head a square appearance. Children with rickets often experience bone pain. This can make them reluctant to walk or crawl, and they might cry when you try to move their limbs during diaper changes or dressing. The muscles can become weak and flabby, and the child might have a pot-bellied appearance. Dental problems are common in children with rickets. Their teeth might be slow to come in, and when they do, they're at higher risk of cavities. In severe cases, the rib cage can become deformed, leading to a condition called pigeon chest. It's important to note that while these physical symptoms are the most noticeable, rickets can have other effects on a child's health. Vitamin D plays a role in immune function, so children with rickets might be more prone to infections. They're also at higher risk of fractures due to their weakened bones. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, 
hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of rickets. When a doctor suspects rickets, they'll start by thoroughly examining the child, looking for the characteristic skeletal deformities and signs of delayed growth and development. They'll also ask about the child's diet, sun exposure, and any family history of bone disorders. This information can provide important clues about the potential causes of the condition. Blood tests are usually the next step. These can measure levels of calcium, phosphate, and alkaline phosphatase in the blood. In rickets, calcium and phosphate levels are often low, while alkaline phosphatase levels are high. Doctors will also check vitamin D levels in the blood. X-rays play a crucial role in diagnosing rickets. They can show characteristic changes in the bones, such as fraying and cupping at the ends of long bones. In severe cases, the X-rays might show fractures or bowing of the bones. In some cases, especially if genetic forms of rickets are suspected, additional tests might be needed. These could include genetic testing or specialized tests to measure how the body is processing and using vitamin D and other minerals. Treatment for rickets. Once rickets is diagnosed, treatment usually focuses on correcting the underlying vitamin and mineral deficiencies. For vitamin D deficiency rickets, which is the most common form, treatment typically involves high doses of vitamin D supplements. These are usually given orally, either daily or in larger weekly doses. The exact dose will depend on the child's age and the severity of the deficiency. Calcium and phosphate supplements are often prescribed alongside vitamin D. These help ensure the body has all the building blocks it needs to strengthen and repair the bones. In most cases, if rickets is caught early and treated properly, the effects can be completely reversed. The bones will strengthen and straighten as the child grows. However, in severe cases, or if treatment is delayed, some bone deformities might persist. Prevention is a key part of managing rickets. This includes ensuring children get enough vitamin D through a combination of diet, supplements, and safe sun exposure. Many pediatricians recommend vitamin D supplements for all infants, particularly those who are exclusively breastfed. Parents should also be encouraged to include vitamin D-rich foods in their children's diets, such as fortified milk, fatty fish, and egg yolks. For children with genetic forms of rickets, treatment can be more complex and might involve lifelong management with specialized medications. In some severe cases of rickets, orthopedic treatment may be necessary to correct bone deformities. This can include braces or surgery to realign bones and prevent further complications. It's worth noting that while rickets is primarily a childhood disease, the effects of severe vitamin D deficiency can persist into adulthood if not properly treated. Adults with a history of rickets in childhood might be at higher risk for osteomalacia, which is a similar condition that causes soft bones in adults. While rickets is a preventable and treatable condition, it can have lasting effects if not addressed promptly. Early detection and intervention are key to preventing permanent bone deformities and ensuring healthy growth and development in children. Now, we want to hear from you. Have your child or someone you know ever encountered rickets or vitamin D deficiency? What was that experience like? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.